Right, so in this video, I'm going to share with you about GoProxy. So let's imagine that we are building something with Go, and usually we will import the party modules, right? So for example, we import this package from github.com slash pkg slash errors, right? That's how we define the modules, right? Based on the locations. We import this and then the Go tooling will download this one into our laptop. And then uh, we're gonna save it in pod case, right? This is where all of the modules being cased locally. There is another uh, Go environment variables called Go proxy. This is basically telling the Go tools how it should fetch the modules, right? And by default, the value will be a proxy to proxy.golang.org, and the second one is direct. So the first one, proxy.golang.org, is basically a online services created by Google, and they call it a model mirror, right? This is a proxy. So how it works? So let's say this is uh, your laptop when we are building something and then we need to download these package errors with the latest versions to a Google proxy module mirror. So what it does, it will check whether these modules exist in their services. If it is not, then it will try to fetch from the source in this example from github.com and then it will get the codes the modules code and then it will uh, kind of like make a zip kind of files into a modules and then give it back to our laptop so we can use it for our development and if the errors package for this version access in Google proxy service, then it will just return us the zip files. So we will have a performance a boost by using a proxy here because the models already kind of like zip for, for us and then return back to us. So if let's say for some reasons, this Google proxy cannot find the source from uh, from uh, GitHub, right? It will, it will return a four four or four uh, not found error if the resource not found or for ten gone, right? It's basically telling that the resource that requested is not available and maybe found can be found elsewhere so it it returned that errors and then our tools will go to the second option which is in this case direct which basically means that from our laptop will go direct to the source which is github so if you notice here that we are send a request to Google services, which means we are sending our identity in terms of IP address. And if we see that the privacy policy for that model mirror policy is that it will save our IP addresses and other requests that we send to the service uh, at maximum 30 days. So at least at 30 days, Google knows what we are doing. And if you are skeptical with that privacy issue, 
then there is an option for you to not use this uh, proxy services. The first one and the obvious one is that you go directly to github.com like that and it works, right? But uh, you will lose some uh, features, which is one of them is the uh, is the casing features. So for example, that if somehow for any reasons, the author of this package decided to remove the latest versions of this package from GitHub, right? Like that. It means that you are not longer to build your binaries, right? But if you are using a proxy service like this and that models already case inside it, you can still get it and build your binaries. So you will miss a durability features by avoiding a proxy service like this. So there is an alternative. For example, you can build your own proxy model, model mirror, right? Private proxy model mirror. And then you can direct your request to this services instead of Google want, right? And then, then you can configure your proxy to also fetch from GitHub if it cannot get the modules inside these services, right? So right now, uh, the privacy issue is solved because you are using your private module uh, mirror services instead of sending it to Google. And to do this, you can use a project called the Athens. This is one of the open source projects out there where you can build uh, your own proxy services using this one. Or, or if you prefer a paid service, you can use a JFrox. This is one of the services that provide that kind of similar solution for you. Let's go to the next cases. So the next case is, is that what if you make a request uh, for a code that is private? Right, a secret code yeah, that belongs to you only or to your organization only in a private uh, VCS or private repository, right? And then here we are using a Google proxy services. So what will happen is that your laptop will send a request first to Google proxy modules with this address. And since uh, Google proxy services cannot find these modules inside their services, then it will try to fetch to your private VCS like that, right? But obviously it cannot fetch from your private VCS, right? Because it will stay behind a firewall, something like that. It needs uh, some kind of authentications. Therefore, Google Proxy will return to us uh 401 sorry 404 not found errors right it's gonna be 404 errors then our laptop will try to find directly to our private pcs repository which we can get our models from there so the problem with this approach is that <clears throat> there is a unnecessary call to Google Proxy Model Mirror, right? Uh, and then Google Proxy Model Mirror will understand that, oh, actually you have this kind of private VCS, right? So to avoid this unnecessary call, Golang provides us uh, another environment variables, right? 
called uh, go no proxy or go private. So if you set these environment variables, let's say you set go no proxy value with let's say let's say git lab dot com slash steve and learn something like that this is your private vcs right therefore the next time when we request a modules from gitlab.com slash steve and learn it will not go to the proxy but instead it will directly fetch from the source which is gitlab.com slash steve allen other than that uh for example github.com package errors it will go to the google proxy service as usual right so that's what it's all about yeah that's all that i want to discuss with you i found this is very interesting the level of engineering decisions that has been made in the go ecosystems so I hope I see you in the next video. Until then, uh, keep learning and stay healthy. Bye-bye.